Last time Jen ranked 20 horror games in 20 minutes, and you guys asked for more, so this time, she's gonna do the rest. I'm Scott. I'm Jen. We're Retro Rivals, and this is a ranking video of all the horror games Jen has played. And I have to be honest, I had to add one she to Windbucket. She added another one. So there should be 43 left in here. We're gonna try to do it all in this video, and quick. And I'm gonna try to be quick. <laughs> First one on the list is Sweet Home. Oh, okay. So this is a Famicom game. I was really excited for this one to come up. So. I initially started playing this to add another retro game to a video last year of retro horror games and modern horror games. I did a split. I wasn't sure what to think about this one at first. I kind of softlocked myself by not having enough planks to get across things. But you know what? I restarted it a few hours into it. And I was like, no, I really want to see this game through. And I'm happy I did. I know roughly where you're going to be. It was really, really good. I was shocked. It's kind of a prequel to Resident Evil is what it's it's uh, touted as. And I think this is, cons all things considering, a solid A for me. Solid A. A, right yeah, right? right there. All right. All right, next one. I better do this quick, because Jen's not quick. I'm trying. In Nightmare. I don't know this one at all. Uh, it's probably down here somewhere. Then. It wasn't great. I had high hopes for it. What is it? A PS4 game? It's or? a PS4 game, okay. I do believe. It's on the PS4 or PS5. You're this like little blonde-headed kid, and there was really great parts of the game where I enjoyed it more, especially when I'm walking around the town and trying to uh, avoid these monsters. And then the puzzles were just... They weren't good. They were like... Too easy or no. too hard? way too hard sometimes right. and then just other times didn't make sense it was just so so um it's a c for me it's yeah unfortunately i wanted to like it more but let's get going and we're gonna have resident evil 7 biohazard i know where this would rank for me but i'm curious to see where jen ranks this sucker um it's not resident evil 4 but it's in the same category as Resident Evil 4. It's an S. Oh, it's, it's one of the scariest games, if not the scariest game I've ever played. Nothing I didn't love about this game. The Winter Family is never going to be my favorite. Ethan as the main protagonist. It's just, he's not... I like the fact that it was set like very Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, that part of it was awesome. Secluded. Yes. Lots of jump scares. Lots of jump yeah. scares. And I'm just going to toot my own horn. I played it and uh, no death ran it, so I was pretty excited about that. All right, let's get done with the bragging here yeah. and start getting into the games. Okay. I know which one this is. Okay. Clock Tower. <gasps> I loved this one too. So you got this as a gift from? Do you nerd, Tom and Lacey. Yes. They, uh, had a, they had a loose disc kicking around. Thought you yeah. might like something like this. I really did enjoy it. Very different than anything I'd play. It's more of a hide-and-seek kind of game. Um, you're not really able to fight back. Uh, the main uh, character's name is Jennifer, which is pretty cool. And just Scissor Man as your antagonist. He's he's hilarious. It was cheesy, but in the best way, and like really graphic too. Like considering like the deaths. Considering what they could do. With yeah, considering graphics. what they could do. I had to get Clock Tower Rewind because of it. I think this is probably, as much as I loved it, there is some jank to it. And there was some hard times trying to get around figuring out what I had to do. So it's not an A, but it is top of the B list. Okay. Infliction Extended Cut. Okay. As much as I complain, what is this? I'm going to explain to you. As much as I complain about horror walking sims, this would fit in that genre. However, there were well-placed jump scares and the story was good enough that I really enjoyed it. She's also a painter. So I really loved that aspect of it. And at the end, you get to walk through the gallery of her paintings and they all like veer a little bit on the dark side. PS4 game or PS5? It's one or the other. But I really, really thought this was a sleeper. It's kind of, 
I wouldn't call it a hidden gem, but it definitely doesn't get talked about enough. And it was a really great game. I'm going to say it's, you know, for what it is, it's a B. It's, it's a good game, but it's never going to touch, you know. All right. We're gonna need longer. I know. <laughs> I know. We're so gonna do. We're gonna do games. our best. All right, Limbo. Limbo was fantastic. Now I have a hard time sometimes separating Limbo from Inside because they're it's a dual mm, pack. Very similar. I yeah. played them back to back. It either one of these games that would come up would end up being a B for me. They're very simple games, but they're simply done very well and it's more they're on the shorter side too, it's shorter right? side more of a puzzle platformer you're basically getting from point a to point b and trying to figure out how to do it you like you're gonna have a high death count but it's it's really really good game deadly premonitions <laughs> just played this one. i did yeah. uh this was a recommendation from you guys when we talked about 360 games as i mentioned before with condemned criminal origins so i literally played that right after this now this one was, it had me conflicted. Some days I hated it, some days I loved it. I hated driving around in the car. I really hope that if they do do a remake of this at some point, they do a fast travel. Come on. But it was cheesy and weird and he's talking to himself the entire time. Chicken and when, relate. when you kill the enemies in them, they're like, I don't wanna die. It, it was just hilarious. It's not perfect, but I think I'd still put it in the B. Next. <laughs> this was the one she added, as you can tell by the writing. Callisto Protocol. Okay. I, I have a good idea where it's going. I will say, I do not understand the hate this game gets. And I was right there with you listening to reviews too damn much. And... To the point where I'm like, oh, I don't want to fucking on. play this. Yeah. I don't want to play this game. And I played it, and I was like, oh, this might be a better Dead Space. And maybe that would cause ruffle some feathers. But it Probably. is a really great game. The one thing that will knock it down to an A and not an S rank. I had a game-breaking glitch in the game, and I'm going to caution anybody that plays it. It was towards the end of the game. I'm probably, like, last chapter or two completely froze up on me deleted all my save states i thought i was gonna have to start it over and at that point i'm like i'm not i'm not starting this game over but then i went into some reviews and tried to figure out what this was and if anybody else had experienced it and they had start a new game as soon as your character starts walking around you can pause go into your save states and they're all there so that was i i might have lost five minutes because it had just auto saved not all that long before fantastic game outside of that and the environments were all different the enemies they built upon them as the game went on i really thought it was a solid solid a graphically looked pretty damn it good. was I've really good the voice acting was top notch resident evil 2 remake Ooh, this remake. yeah uh i like the remake slightly more than the original um and that says a lot about the original I think it, I would be hard pressed to not put most Resident Evil games in the S tier, and this one is also an S tier Resident oh, Evil game. Really? Yes. I love that you can play both sides of the um, both characters. Don't worry, I will get you but I mean, I've never ever played other than uh, than Leon. Always. Tell me everything. See how I reach into the bucket while she's talking? It's probably a smart move. It like gives her a cue to like zip it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Being home. This is this a Switch game? It is a Switch right. game. Um, and it was really good. I played it with headphones because I knew that probably would be the best way to play it. It was dark enough and it was more, you know, walking around and solving puzzles and stuff like that. It was on a triple pack on the Switch. I thought it, for what it was, it was good. Um... I'm like conflicted on a B or a C because it's not anything special, but I elevated it playing it the way it should be played to get the best out of it. I would probably still put it in a C. 
because I don't think there's anything really groundbreaking about it. Cold Fear on the original Xbox. Yeah. I think you played that last year, didn't you? I did. Uh, super good okay. game. The best way I can describe it is Resident Evil on a boat. Um, but that being said, boy, is it dark. Like, not dark content. The, the screen is dark. I know you can bump up some stuff, but it's going to, you know, yeah, it's going to play with the visuals a little bit. Uh, I really did enjoy this game, but I felt like I had to continually turn to a walkthrough because it was so dark. And I felt I was constantly running out of ammo, and then the enemies were fairly strong. I think I'm going to put it in the B. I did love this game, but my god, if any horror game needed a remake, this would be on that list. Do they give you a cue at the first of it to adjust brightness? I don't know I don't if know. they do, because I played it on... Or is it just kind of go by as you feel? They were probably trying to set an atmosphere. Yeah. Which actually took but that was on me. the Xbox I played it, right? Yeah. OG Xbox. So yeah. I don't know if it even prompted me to do that. Resident Evil 2. The original. The OG. Yeah. Uh, again, because I loved it so much and just slightly less than the remake it's gonna go in the s tier s tier yes i still think it's an s tier game it's just giving you that how did you play it did you play it on the uh, yeah on the ps1 or yeah did you pay i have it on the vita also no no, no i played on the ps1 yeah. pine view drive oh my god i know where this is gonna <laughs> I think RNG Gamer and I would both agree this is a D. <laughs> it, uh, oh. It, it was a Canadian only uh, physical release game, release, yeah. And, uh, you would vomit if you had to play this. Like, I had to yeah. mess with the visuals quite a bit. And you're just walking around. It's probably a better PC game than it is. It looks like a point and click PC game. That's what it is. Yep. Basically, if something scares you and you move your analog sticks, then you're going to take damage. That's it. The end part of the game I was better it, than the whole yeah. rest of it the game. It would have made more sense if you were using a mouse, a mouse. and scared you and you jumped. Then and you're... then you move your mouse. But I just was like, I'd walk around and then when I'd feel jump scare, I'd just take my hands off the analog stick. I wouldn't go, whoa! Uh. So, it's never gonna... Little Hope. I don't know this one. A little Hope is the one that you're... It's uh, super massive games. You're on the bus. Oh! I do it know starts out with a fire at first, <laughs> at the very first of the game. We enjoyed this one. It was kind of like a ghost. You keep killing us. I we keep can't get the good us. ending. We but, can't get the good yeah. ending. But as far as a super massive game, I'm, it's it's odd to me. This one doesn't rank higher on most people's list. But to us, it was better than most of the super massive games I outside the of the quarry. And yep. yeah, uh, I would say that's a B. It's, it's still. You know, I, I don't think it's anybody's going, oh my god, I can't I, wait to I play think that, that's but it's most, still a really good song. I think that's most of the, those, yeah. that library of Supermassive games. Yeah. Very good, what the hell is this but they're not going to yeah. set records. Resident Evil 4 Remake. Oh, the remake? Just throw it in the S tier. Put it at the top. We all know that's going at the top. Right. I said before, and I'll say it again. OG game. remake or VR, it's an S tier. Yeah, she talks about it all the time. I We're talk about it all the time. Her. We're gonna cut her off. Right? Yeah. All right, a. creeping terror. Okay, so this one is a DS game, not a physical release. Uh, they did talk about releasing it for the Switch. Still hasn't happened. Um, you are a bunch of high school students going to this. I don't know if they consider it a haunted house. Perhaps I can't remember the setup for it, but you're film you're going to film a YouTube video and trying to catch a ghost on camera. And this one was really cool. I really enjoyed it. It's more again of a hide and seek, and you're playing different characters in the game, I do believe. It, it it's falling a little bit in the background. That's not to say it wasn't a good game. I really enjoyed my time with it, but it's not super memorable. I would probably put this in the B category. I really enjoyed my time with it and it was well done for what it was. 
I would love to see it come out on the Switch. Just so more people can play it. It's basically dead IP at this point. I think you might be able to play it on Steam. I can't remember. Okay. Inside. Okay, so of the two pack, Inside was definitely my favorite of the two. It was a little bit more sinister, especially towards the end when you see what happens. Uh, you can play that on several consoles. I think we have a double pack on the 360. That's where I was looking. I looked up there. Yeah, I do it, believe it's I don't on the 360, game. but we might also have it on the PS4. I think there was a double pack as well. Or Xbox. I think they're on both Xbox One as well. It's a really good, um, a little step up from, from Limbo. I think I liked it a little bit more. I put Limbo in the B pile, but I think I'm tempted to put this one in A. Okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed this and the story really caught me off guard. I was, at the end of it, I was like, oh my God, this is messed up. Okay. I don't know how she's gonna talk long about this one, but she'll try. But she'll try. Until Dawn. Russia blood. It's just a really, really cool VR on rail shooter. It is. It scared you, which in turn scared me. One of very me. few games that scared me the first time around. Yeah. Um, there's a jump scare part where you stop on the roller coaster at one part, and you can see Ghost Girl, and then you see her again over there, and then the VR is tracking you, and then you're looking around, and, and it won't do what it's supposed to do until you look right where it's in your face is oh, yeah. screaming in your face and that's what got me. Yeah. And once it got me up there it was hard to come back down. Yes. <laughs> it's just a really fantastically well done VR game. Um, you really feel like you're on a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. It like the jump scares were enough and frequent enough that you got that scare from it but it wasn't overplayed we've had lots of replay value yes. on it because we've watched a lot of our friends oh yeah we throw it. people in this every time they come over like have you played a vr game <laughs> you're going to um i think that's an a tier game i really really do for a vr so. game i'm yeah it's very well done i can see that hundo house of ashes this is also super massive yes this one, I got the two confused last time because when we were talking about another super massive game um, that you're actually in like a, uh, like this death house where they have all these setups for like killing you, then I still feel the way I feel about it because I think both of them for me are C tier games. I wasn't crazy about them. Those will probably be two of the lowest on my list that we had the least amount of enjoyment out of. House of Ashes, that's the one underground, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one where you're underground. Yeah, underground, caves, it was just had like, this kind of like almost Egyptian feel to it. Yeah. To the backstory. It just, it didn't resonate. I wish it would have, but it didn't. Yeah. Not enough jump scares. Yeah. I mean, if you're underground, they could have worked that so much better. I think so. The Quarry. Oh. This is a better one. This is a better one. This, yeah. this one was a little bit slow out the gate. And some of the face renderings, especially at first, I was like, what happened just there? Like, yeah, they've, uh, it could have been better graphically, but... Yeah, it was a little bit jank at first, like some things got messed mm -hmm. up. I'm like, holy lord, that smile alone was it scary. Have, it could have been, it might have been fixed by now. Yeah, but that being said, it's not until dawn, but it is damn good, and I think that will be towards the top of the B tier. I don't think it's going to make A tier, but it's really towards the top of the B tier, and we had more fun playing it with more people. You do. You do. You do. Somerville. Why am I having a hard time remembering this? I don't know. I don't play Somerville. I... Is that the one where the aliens? Yes. Yes. Um, this was made by. I'll tell you what the 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 trailer for it, like the commercial, the trailer oh, did... sold it more than the game did. Yeah. Uh, uh, this game as an experience. It's over there. Yeah, I it might even be here. Okay. This game as an experience was really sad for me because the I do believe this is from the same creators of Limbo and Inside, and that studio went off on their own and separated and made this game, and this game was not great. Okay. 
Man of Medan. Okay, again, another super massive game. We've played them all except for the casting of Frank Stone. Is this the one on the on ship? On the ship. Okay. This is the one on the ghost ship. Man of Medan, we didn't jive with right off the bat. We had put it away and came back to it. And it's really a game you're going to want to play with more people. We tried playing a two-player, and it just didn't do it justice. I still don't remember the ending of it, so it couldn't have been that great. It, yeah, the ending was a little bit lackluster, although I think we got a good it's ending. Between these two, probably. Yeah, I, it's not as bad as House of Ashes, though, and it will probably be in the B tier. It's just not high up on I'm gonna the I'm going to start stacking these things. I don't care. <laughs> do what you do. I think we got to go all digital next time we do this. Okay. <laughs> Dead Space. The original. Yes. I never, I haven't played the remake. Uh, I really loved Dead Space. It, it's, yeah, it's an A tier game for me. Maybe that would bother some people and hurt their feelings. Uh, Not everybody likes all the same games you know the same space life. games do scare me so I, i'll give it that aliens and stuff in outer space scare me but it got repetitive a little bit and that will probably knock it down from an s tier for me it just got a little bit repetitive in places uh i don't know that it's a terribly long game but i can't remember i maybe somewhere in the 15 20 hour area would have been better as like a Eight to 12 hours. Well, that's what Callisto Protocol was. It was a more condensed version of Dead Space with different areas. And I just, that's why I think Callisto Protocol is better than Dead Space, but not everybody would agree. Little Nightmares 2. Yep. Fantastic game. Um, story wise, not as strong as the first one. Mechanics, better than the first one. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I think I would probably that in the A tier. I, in very few games do I play the DLC of, and I think Little Nightmares, both of them had DLC and I played both. So. Wow. Yeah. Silent Hill, the first one. Ooh. Um, I have to go based off, like, it's never going to be my favorite Silent Hill game. You only played it probably within the last five-ish yes. years. Yes. So, saying that, if you had played it day one, oh, the impact yeah. would have been bigger. It would have been bigger. Yeah. But, when I did play it, I got a lot from it. I thought it was a really great game. It's never going to be the best Silent Hill game, but I still think it's an A-tier game. It's not, it's not an S-tier game. It can't be. There's just better Silent Hill games. Enough said. Yeah. Remothered Broken Porcelain. I really wanted this one to be good. That's the second one? Yeah. Okay. Um, Tormented Fathers is the first one. And that was kind of weirdly, not groundbreaking. It's never going to be groundbreaking. This one was broken when that it was one first was, released. It right? was broken. Yeah. And uh, they fitting of its it. name. Yeah, they, they patched it. Yeah, it's just not. Out, it's just, it didn't do what the first one did. The first one was really surprising and interesting it yeah it's not as bad as somerville for me but i think it would be c tier it's just yeah it's just average the red nut is what sells that game in both i've of them. seen you play some yeah. of it yeah signalis oh it's a ps4 game right i have sung this game's praises over and over again sometimes on deaf ears but uh if you haven't picked it up, they're they are making they are making more of them now. They're like having Sequels? a second printing. Oh no, you you mean they're making yeah um, doing more physical releases? Yes. Uh, but this the original release of it, it's it's up in the like eighty ninety dollar range now. It's people have started to catch on. It's That's a good game. Bad. It's it's pixel. Uh, space androids. It's very very interesting and. It's kind of like, it, it overwhelms you because you don't get a lot of ammo. The enemies do not respawn, but if you don't kill them, kill them, they will come back to life. Like, it's like you put them down for a little bit, but then they're going to come back. I really enjoyed this one. I think it's an A tier game. It's not an S tier game, but it is a damn good A tier game. Listen, you talk. I was going to start throwing it over there. No, it is, it is really good, but. All right, I'm going to 
Rogers and see what she puts this one. <laughs> Silent Hill 3. Oh. PS2. It is my favorite Silent Hill game. Um, yes. I, I don't know if it's like I liked playing as a female character. I felt there was more varied environments. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's how I felt when I was playing it. And I, I like the enemies in it. It's, if I have to go Silent Hill or Resident Evil, Resident Evil's always going to win. But Silent Hill 3 is my favorite, and I still think it's an S-tier game. I really, really like that one. Did you get a Silent Hill up there in the there. last year? Did it. Did it for you guys. Yeah. Did it for the team. The Last of Us number one. Just put it in the S tier. Yeah, I do. Yeah. What do I, what more do I have to say, guys? Like I, I talk so. about that all the time. Yeah, that was probably a game that really sold you on gaming. That made me want. Because you to... weren't gaming when no. I played that the first time, no. and you just would not leave me alone. Here. I know. We gotta play. I it. wanted to. I didn't know how to do do dual yeah. analog, and that kind of made me want to. Evil Within number two. You pro most people would probably disagree because you see the caliber of the game in the S tier, but that's an S tier game to me. This is your own personal ranking. This is my own personal Whatever ranking. So yes. People can get all but Evil Within 2 was a better version of the first one and it was a little bit more open world. You did feel very tense playing it. And just the whole setup of a father trying to find his daughter in this world where she's kind of the brain of this this world and it's all going to hell really fast like it's not it's like and kind of like an ai world of her creation not her creation but she's kind of the brain of it she's keeping it together and things are starting to fall apart just a really great story and i love the antagonist and protagonist and it was good i seen you play most of this among the sleep yes I will tell you... Dark ending. Yes. Do not base this game off of its opening scene. Because I'm like, no. am I playing a toddler's game? What is going on? Mm -hmm. I love this game so much I did a review of it. You're playing this in the first person aspect of being a toddler. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. his second birthday, I do believe, that makes in sense. the game. <clears throat> um, and I kept waiting for that teddy bear to get sinister. He's voiced by a very uh recognizable actor I, I can't remember if he did he did a horror yeah there's so i, I can't, can't remember. remember who it is but i remember you telling me it was something significant yes but... and you can tell by the voice i think yeah. it's a ghost face ghost the face? guy that did ghost face does the sense. uh voice acting for this i honestly think Whoa. i th i think I, I think this is an a-tier game i don't yeah. i like maybe I'm. This is just my own personal. I think it right? caught you by I, surprise. I it think it did. was uh, you had to play all the way through it to appreciate the ending. Yeah. I think the ending surprised everybody. That's what, like that. It would have been a B tier tier game, and that ending was wow. I can pretty much guess you're not going to talk long about this one because Martha is dead. So disappointing. Could have done so much with this, and they didn't. Dark with a Q. This one was really cool too. Um, they played with the physics of the game because you're constantly changing um, how the screen is. So you have to flip the screen to get to different parts of the map. Uh, all kind of like black, white, sapia tone imagery. Gave me little nightmare vibes. Uh, Dark was really, really good. I would probably put it as a solid B tier game. All right, this is where Jen might piss people off. Silent Hill number two. PS2 yes. era. You just got done saying number three was your favorite. Number three is my favorite. However, Silent Hill 2 is still an S tier game. It's Ooh. just not my favorite Silent Hill. I think probably the only S tier games, and I'm saying this with a grain of salt because I haven't played all of them. Um, I think they would be the only two S tier games where Resident Evil would probably have a lot more entries in that S tier ranking. Just depends on what you do. I'm playing the remake right now, and uh, I couldn't add it to this because I'm not done. It's not finished. 
but it is very true to the original and that's what makes it great. Like that original game was fantastic. Madison. I really wanted to like this game. I really did, but I thought the jump scares were basically for nothing. And there was very few times where it caught me off guard. And maybe that's because I'm desensitized. <laughs> I <laughs> would put Madison in the C tier. Right. I don't think everybody would, but this is my own personal ranking. I just didn't love it as much as I wanted to. Remothered, tormented fathers. Okay. While this is better than Remothered Broken Porcelain, it's not a perfect game. But it is, Same area. it is better. Graphically, it's never going to be your best PS4 game. It was more of a PS3 graphics game, but really well done and great story and caught me off guard. I do believe this is a B-tier game. All right. Yeah. Oh, I'm curious to know this one. Kudelka. PS1. Yeah. Turn-based. RPG. Tactic Survival, horror, elements. Yeah. yeah, uh really great storytelling in this. Cheesy AF acting, uh voice acting, although there was voice great. acting. So that was like great atmosphere. Great atmosphere. Great music. PS1 game. Um tough as nails if you play it the way I played it. Uh super easy. Super easy for him. But I got the better ending. I got the good ending. You got the great ending. I got the the best ending, apparently, but yeah. it wasn't the best ending. No. It was considered the best ending for how you performed, but that's not the ending that spawned the, the Shadow. Sequels, yeah, the Shadow, Shadow Hearts. Games. So, no. I honestly think this is an A tier game. I don't I don't hear Good. enough people talk about it and it is fantastic. You would have had sleep on the couch. There you go. Manhunt 2. Oh. Ho. Oh. This some of the imagery and sounds in this would turn some people off because they'd be like, oh, I feel uncomfortable playing this game. <laughs> Meanwhile, I played it on a lilac purple Hannah Montana PS, or uh, not PS, PSP. but uh, PSP. Yeah. I almost said PS Vita. Um, but PSP. I was like, I had to wear headphones sometimes because like, I want people to hear what I'm playing. It's It sounds very sexual. And there was a lot of sexual connotation in it. But the way you would kill people, it was so damn gruesome. I freaking loved it. I thought it was hilarious and gruesome maybe and gory. I'm, maybe I'm gonna sleep on the couch. You maybe you're gonna sleep on the couch tonight. Super. It's not it's not perfect, but it's a B tier game. Right. Yeah. Resident Evil Six. Okay. It's gonna be curious to see this. I actually am among the, the minority here with, or I think five is better. I don't know. I liked five better. I don't think you're among the minority. I think, you think? I think from what I read in comments and what people say on YouTube, I think the majority of people prefer five okay. over six. I view both Resident Evil 5 and 6 not as a typical Resident Evil, yeah. but a good co-op game, a good That's right. shooter That's right. in the Resident Evil kind of world. And just because the mechanics and the four different stories, I would put this above 5. I see, for me, the mechanics, I'm going to put it in the B tier, the mechanics are better. Yeah. The story at first was better for me. And it is slowly getting less impactful. Indigo Prophecy. <sighs> Indigo Prophecy was okay. Mm -hmm. It was just okay it to me. Okay. I would probably put it in. Ah, uh, it. See. Ah, uh, ah, it's way over here. You mean a? I, I go put it in C. Right. Um, I like the setup for it. The story was great. Towards the end, it got really. Like the end, especially of the game, I thought the whole fight sequence at the end was kind of laughable. I thought it was pretty hilarious, but they had to do with what they could do with graphically. I don't know. It was it was it was good enough to play all the way through. It's kind of a one and done. Last three. Last three. The last three. Corpse Party. That's a D three DS game. Yes. Yeah. Um, Corpse Party was harder than it had to be. 
think you're over in this um, area. I bought the big box and the... She's got uh, two copies of it. I know. I got rid of one. I did get rid did of you? one. Did you? Yeah, we got rid of one. Really? Yeah, we traded it in for something else. I kept the big box because I don't ever plan on playing it again. But I liked the idea of having that sealed big box I can pass on to Alex and he can do with it what he wants. Your That's tail. Your tail. Yeah, it just... There was hell some... of a hell of an eBay store here when oh, we Oh, yeah. Go. I just started following the walkthrough. There was no way I was getting through it on my own. In Sound Mine. In Sound Mine was really good. You're following a therapist through the patients he's lost. And I thought it was something that I hadn't seen before. I really enjoyed it. It's not an S or an A tier game. It's another B tier game. But I'll take... You know, a short experience B tier game any day over like I don't know something that's just like drawn out too far. That that one was a perfect length. All right, days gone. <sighs> I literally just did a stream with Captain Algebra, J Chip Show. Are you seriously gonna and... put that over here? Yeah, it's an S tier game. Anybody Is that's it? a it's it was like it was completely broken. Okay, but that was not my. Oh, also midlife crisis media. I didn't want to leave him out. He was on the stream with us. I loved Days Gone. It was like we took The Walking Dead. Not as much as Dennis. No, not as much as Dennis. <laughs> we took The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy and made a baby, and that's what you got with this. The fact that the hordes were super terrifying. They were extremely fast. It gave me that World War Z kind of vibe. I loved that idea of it. Um, and it's just the whole story of he put his wife on a pl on a chopper and get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. And he puts he put Sarah on the, on the helicopter and stayed with his best friend Deacon because he or a boozer uh, because he knew if he separated from his friend he would never make it on his own. But he knew he was sending his wife somewhere safe. And then they find out that the encampment they were supposed to go to was overrun. So th he thinks he's lost her. And then two years later, you're going through Deacon's story. You're like two years after the apocalypse. Uh, there's freakers everywhere. And I just thought it was such a great setup. And there was enough going for it all the time that I really enjoyed it. They lost you at the Nero checkpoints. You didn't like having to do the stealth missions. I think I played about 20-ish hours. Yeah. And then we stopped for whatever reason. We got this, picked up this game during lockdown, during the pandemic. Yeah. And I can't remember why we stopped it. Probably because it was not the right mood of the yeah. game. Where yeah. We were already kind of locked down and everything. Yes. And I never picked it back up. But now that there's a remastering coming out, yes. and that one better work when it comes yeah. out. I'll pick up a remaster. I won't be buying it day one. And I'll probably I'm play that wait. one. I'm going to wait to see if that's not broken at launch. Well, yeah. That's the end of the video. I'm going to go ahead right now and put these all in order. I'll hey, leave the camera running. If we know, if we've learned anything about this, that Jen likes her games in the B. In the B. But I think most horror games probably fall in the B tier. Um, you have to do something extra. You have to have more story and some diverse gameplay to get it above that. If you're looking in this, it's probably just... That's the same with most movies. That's the same with most movies, exactly. All right, so I'm gonna keep the, that running and you guys will see my final outcome and I'll actually add in a post-production, the overall 63 game ranking and show you top to bottom what I think is the best and what I think is the worst. Like in a list? in a list yeah or on a ranking scale i'll do both but uh thank you guys so much for watching uh, i'm sorry this was such a long video or thank you're welcome it was such a long video depending on how long you want to watch a horror video a ranking video but until next time hope you guys had a great halloween season and game on